All right, welcome back, everybody. This is the Bearded Llama Podcast. I'm Llama Running. We have the beard with us. And today, we're talking about the Floniverse. For those of you who don't yeah, know what that is. The future of the Floniverse. Yeah, future of the Floniverse. That's right. Floney, he is our, you know, Christ-appointed Star Wars savior. You know, God gave him to us George specifically. Lucas. <laughs> George Lucas 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> but exactly. Background. Coming, uh Everyone knows Disney bought Star Wars a couple years back. You know, we had the sequel trilogy. You know, some stuff happened. But now we have The Mandalorian and a whole new announce list of announcements and new shows. And that's only half of it. We have another, you know, six or seven shows being announced at probably Celebration Day here in the summer. But we have immediate announcements. We have Rangers of the New Republic, um, which will take right place relatively soon after Return of the Jedi. That would be, you know, a Filoni and Favreau uh, that, that, uh, show. Maybe. Maybe. I think the, time, and, the, time, the time, timeline of that could be, hmm, you know, I know there are some people with leaks and everything out there, but I kind of debate that a little bit. I don't it'll be after Return of the Jedi, Jedi, but who knows if it's before or after the start of Mandalorian. This is something we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Ahsoka, which will probably take up a bulk of this because I think me and Trevor both have a crush on her. And then, of course, Mandalorian Season 3 and the Book of Fett. We've got a lot of cool stuff going on, a lot of craziness. Um, I know that Trevor listened to the John Favreau interview on Good Morning America, so he's going to start us off telling us about that. And I've read some leaks on Reddit, so I do not have you know a good source. Uh, but to start us off, Trevor, kind of give us through what John said and you know kind of what you're thinking about everything. Yeah. So I know there was a little bit of uh, a little bit of confusion um, between the uh, investor announcements from the Disney Investor Day, and then, of course, at the end, they saved the announcement of the Boba Fett show for the, the, the end credits of the, of the final episode of Season 2 of The Mandalorian, but the whole Book of Fett thing. And so people are like, well, is that like Mandalorian Season 3? Is that something separate or whatever? And, of course, I've always, I thought from the beginning, well, I already knew that it was heavily rumored that Boba Fett was going to have his own series. Now, it probably is going to be a mini-series. It's probably not going to be a multi-season thing. Um, and so that didn't shock me. But what it is, is what's a little hazy is the timing of things. Because I thought, well, okay, that means that they're probably going to release the Book of Fett and Mandalorian kind of like in correlation with each other. But after what uh, Favreau talked about in the Good Morning America interview, um, I'm like, hmm, maybe not. Maybe uh, actually what we're going to get come this, this December 2021 is just the Book of Fett. And the Mandalorian season three will actually happen after that. Um, because he said that they were in, they were in production for Boba Fett, and then that they were ramping up and they were ramping up to start production for The Mandalorian season three. So basically, what it means is he. But what, what I gleaned out of what he said is that they haven't started filming um, season three for Mandalorian yet. Quick means, question. Okay, so how long do you think the delay on Mandalorian season three will be? If if your hunch is right, right. and kind of what he hinted at. If Mando is Christmas time ish, a little sooner, next December, when when would you think that Mandalorian season three would come? Well, I don't think it's going to be like a full another year. Um, but if they let's say they did production, let's say they started doing Mandalorian right after they closed production for Boba Fett. So depending on how far along they are with Boba Fett right now, you know, could get into could get into twenty twenty two for its release. It's it's a, it's a very possibility because. You know, if we talk about the Filoni verse, and so when we talk about the Filoni verse, we're basically talking about the um, the things that Dave Filoni is more specifically involved with, uh, and Favreau, because Favreau is going to be involved in other things that Filoni won't. Um, but I know that Filoni uh, is, is it a fair you know, assessment that Favreau will have movie. his hand in everything, and Filoni is going to have his hand in more specific yeah. projects. Is that is that a fair yeah, now? Is that is that the right way to think yeah. about it? Okay. And I think the Filoni verse is going to be the core. I mean, they're going to have all these other projects. They're going to be kind of standalone, like the Obi Wan show and everything. That'll be more standalone. I think the Filoni verse is going to be more of the continuity of multiple shows that'll culminate into big events, kind of like the the MCU. So you have the Mandalorian. You're going to have the Book of Boba Fett. You have the Ahsoka show, the Rangers of the New Republic. And I mean, in a way, I guess the Bad Batch, Filoni's over the Bad Batch, um, he just because he's the animation guy. You know, he did Clone Wars with Lucas, and he headed up Rebels. 
So it makes sense that you're going to have him do the Bad Batch also because it's basically what he does. You know, he what he's that's his main thing. Even though he's turning into a live action film guy now, you know. Um, Can I say something really quick about the Bad Batch? Is, um, just quick what? thing for everyone. Just something real quick about the Bad Batch. And it's kind of a preview, I think, for all this stuff, especially what you're really about to get into with the Floniverse. Because I think our concept of Star Wars is going to change a little bit. Um, because it's just like the trailer of the Bad Batch. The the biggest thing, and, I, and I've watched several videos on it, and it kind of caught my eye at first, was that hologram of Palpatine declaring, you know, the New Galactic Empire and all that is looking like a Sith and yellow eyes. Bad Batch made it canon that that was in color. So it might not sound like a big thing, but, you know, people got to see him with the, you know, the pretty obvious characteristics of being a Sith. So, I mean, I, yeah. I'm not trying to well, derail too much, but that's cool because that's what Filoni does is he, like you, like you said before, he's George Lucas 2.0. He's going to have all those little subtle Easter eggs that are a little bit well, more profound than you'd at first think. I, well, basically what they were doing with that little clip in Bad Batch, was not to get too far off track, is they were just recreating uh, They were recreating what Palpatine said in the end of Revenge of the Sith, but they're, they're doing it in animation. Because he does that in front of the Galactic, in front of the Senate, that, you know, I've been scarred, and so people know that he looks all weird now, you know, by the, because he was scarred by the Jedi, and, you know, now we're going to have the new Galactic Empire. Because the Bad Batch literally... Takes <clears throat> starts right after the uh, the Clone Wars show, it, you know, because you're gonna have the Bad Batch, which is featured in season seven of the Clone Wars, uh, which means you're also gonna probably have Echo, and then of course Fennec Shan is supposed to show up in the show somehow for some however they tie her in. I don't know. Um, we'll find out. And for a character a that has Finnick like Shan. twenty lines in her existence. I'm in love with her. It could be the actress because I'm a big fan of her, but I don't know. Finnick says yeah. nothing. <laughs> like, I'm so excited for this cameo. When I saw her, I was like, whoa. Yeah. But it's it's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I like how they're, they're tying things together. I mean, I like that they're, they're using, you know, getting some characters that don't get a lot of play in some aspects or some properties they're going to give and others, which is cool. But um, I think with the whole The Mandalorian Season 3, the, the, okay, you know, the question is, is did they plan it like this, or or was this a delay because of some controversy? Um, you know, um, they obviously left season two of Mandalorian open, like, with with stuff to follow. Like, they, they there was the, the arc, uh, there was an arc that finished with Gro Grogu, but um, they... You know, there's stuff to deal with, like going forward with the dark saber and Bo-Katan and everything. So, but there was a there was a controversy, a rumor, controversy, whatever. You know, it's hard to figure out exactly what was going on, like behind the scenes. But there was some controversy that that Pedro Pascal had some issues with how his character was being done. That he wanted his face shown more and all that. But then, of course, we heard that it got resolved, and you know, we but don't today, know. Really. Nerds did a video. Apparently, according to his sources, that drama with Pedro is real and a little bit more severe yeah. than people think at first. So I, they, we're but hearing but they, but they all kinds of reports. They got but... Yeah, but they they got it. Well, whatever the case is, it's been worked out, okay? Because they've even confirmed that Pedro Pascal is coming back for season three of The Mandalorian. So whatever. Now, if that is part of why they delay, if is that is that a reason for the delay? of Mandalorian, Mandalorian season three, or is it because they want to put this book about a fet in? Before, I think it was always critical. the plan. I think what they did with Luke mm -hmm. holding that secret for the fans benefit for, to make us feel like the way we felt, I think it's, and I think, I think they already know when season three is coming out Mandalorian yeah. and they book a fet, they had to keep it secret to not ruin the finale. I think that this is manufactured chaos because, well, you got to keep the fans busy. You got to keep that interest mm -hmm, beat. Yeah. You got to, you know, create. Sometimes you got to create your own mess. Like I know politicians do it all the time, or at least in the shows I watch. Well, they'll fake a, you know, a, a run in with a young lady, or a, you know, took money from this country. They'll they'll fake stuff just to, you know, get some talk going. So I, I think it's manufactured. Yeah. 
I think it's too well I, I thought know. out what, in the future it? to have all these shows. I think they have a 10, 15 year plan, at least a rough plan of what they're going to do. Okay. So, so let me, let me continue here. Um, so whatever the, whatever the controversy is, well, whatever it's been settled and I don't get caught up in uh, the, the drama aspects. Like, you know, I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, the Pedro Pascal drama, like videos come across my feed, like my YouTube feed, all, and I ignore almost all of them, like, because I don't care. Just like the whole Gina Carano, there's been like drama with her, people trying to cancel her on social media. Like, I really don't know exactly and totally what that's about, and I don't care. Like, because it's, it's just people being dumb and toxic, you know, I don't care. But now... There's a possibility, and this is cool. Now, this is what I think what could be good about there being a little bit of a delay on season three of Mandalorian and doing the Book of Fett first is because now there's could be talk that there could be a time jump uh, for Mandalorian season three. All right, and so this works out a couple things. Now, first of all, let's just talk about the practical uh, nature of people and time and production and writing. You got Dave Filoni, who's writing the Ahsoka show. You have John Favreau, who's writing the uh, the New Republic, the Rangers of the New Republic show. You know, there's only so much these guys can do at once. They brought Robert Rodriguez in on as an executive producer for the Book of Boba Fett. So basically, what they did is they brought another heavy hitter in uh, to to basically like help with the workload. You have a workload here. You know, you, you have real quick. Things take can you time. tell me some of his old work? Cause that name sounds really familiar, but I can't piece together. Uh, why? Oh gosh. I am brain farting, but he did direct. <laughs> okay. He did direct the, uh, he's done a lot of action stuff. Um, yeah, people are going to, uh, people are going to be like, you should know Robert Rodriguez. Anyway, he directed the episode of Boba Fett that when he comes for uh, on Python, when Boba Fett comes and says, I'm a bad mofo, like, give me my armor back, and I'm going to go beat up a bunch of stormtroopers. Like the, you that said Robert Rodriguez, right? On. Robert Rodriguez. He, uh, I know some of the films. My kids, like, Sin City, Planet Terror. Yeah, it's it. Yeah. Machete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like he's kind of those bigger independent movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, those kind of um, um, uh, very... Um, oh, Culty, cult, cult movies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, did he do the um, the Death Race one also? I don't know. I don't. I don't yeah, remember. he did Death Proof, he Grindhouse, Planet Terror. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. He did yes, all the Spy yes. Kids, so I'm really excited. I love. Yeah, <laughs> I which love is crazy. The Spy Kids. Yeah, which, which is insane because he like did a kids show, but then he did all these like kind of gore type grindy, you know, right. like grind like films too. Um. So, because they kind of brought, you know, Robert Rodriguez to do all the action of the episode, you know, that episode on Python, like they wanted someone that could come in and direct that stuff really well. But I think that basically, again, it's, it's, uh, they, they brought Robert Rodri Rodriguez into, to, as a big player on the Boba Fett show. And I think it's to help take some of the load because you got a lot of stuff here going on. And, you know, there's only so much time in a day. And here's my opinion. I would rather them take a little bit more time to roll this stuff out and have the right people doing it instead of bringing in people that don't understand stuff to write and direct things and mess it up. True. So and real quick, back it. about Robert Rodriguez. You said he's in the Book of Fett, right? He directed he, – he's an executive producer on the Book of Fett. All right, I will put a hundred dollar bet to anyone. I'll give you two to one odds that Danny Trejo will be in man our book of Fett since he is in just about every movie that Robert Rodriguez is in. So that cameo hey, is hey, gonna be fun. <laughs> hey, if you're gonna do some sort of CD underworld thing like Boba Fett's involved in, you have to have Trejo in it, right? And I hope this leads to maybe like a, a machete sequel based in star wars I don't, maybe a grind i don't know something weird we need that weird quentin tarantino yeah, yeah. star wars movie yeah, yeah. about absolutely yeah, nothing <laughs> well no, uh, not to get too far off track but you know quentin tarantino wants to write a star trek he wants to do a star trek movie star trek yeah star trek i said because there was that post in your banter group i forget who shared about your dream you know director for a star wars film or show and what would it be about mm -hmm. and i want to do quentin tarantino because he's my favorite director but I literally could not think of a Star Wars subject material I'd want him to do. So I'm glad he's doing Star Trek because I want to see fantasy, but well, well, you know, I don't know where he'd go with Star Wars. 
he said he wants to. I've never heard that they've greenlit him, but it would be interesting for for Corn, Quentin, Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino to do a to do a Star Trek because I want to see that just because how would that work out? <laughs> that would. He's such a great director, but it's like, man, I think you're a little too serious for this stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 exactly. You know, it'd be it'd be uh, you know the captain sitting around having long conversations with his crew, you know. Right. You know what? You know what might also possibly be like the worst combination ever. What if Tarantino did like a Yoda origin movie? I think we'd walk away with no answers to anything and just Probably confused. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, because you take his, uh, his all his uh, dialogue that he writes, and then with and Yoda speak would be you know anyway. But we're, we're we digress. <laughs> but um, so so I think that you know we have to think of things in a practical sense that we. That as much as a fantasy world as Star Star Wars is, um, that people have to write it, people have to build the props, people have to set up the sets, people have to, you know it just all takes time, and you know uh, well, less than with the volume, that's a game changer. Yeah, well, yeah, you're right, you're right. That's also what allows them to announce ten shows, <laughs> right? Know? Right, you know. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to allow time for. Um, uh, them to do the FET, you know, for Filoni and Favreau to be writing on those stuff. And then, of course, they'll be, I'm sure they've already been doing pre production on Mandalorian 3 anyway, because they ordered they ordered the season three like a long time ago. I so read something they, today saying that they have started pre production. Yeah, now, yeah. There's absolutely. a lot of pre production, so who knows how far they yeah. really are. Well, and, and these days with the volume, there's a lot more pre production because they're starting to do post production as pre production now. And during the because they have to design all the stuff that goes up on the volume. Now, if you don't know what we're talking about when we say the volume, then you need to go watch the documentary series called Gallery, and it's about the making of um, the making of the Mandalorian season one. And they explain the volume. It's a new technology they've done that is just it's actually mind blowing. And I'm not I won't explain it now, <clears throat> but it's it's pretty phenomenal documentary on the and uh, of course on the Christmas here in a little bit they're going to be coming out with the uh, the next gallery um talking about the season two stuff which would be awesome so we'll get some good background there we'll do some banter group uh discussions on that for sure but uh so what we have here is is just the practical nature of being able to produce things you know and um so yeah we might be waiting a little bit longer for mandalorian season three but the bonus or that what why that's okay is because we're going to get boba fett you know so we're not going to be dealing you know, we're not going to be getting like less, um, like less Star Wars. It's just uh, we might have to wait a little bit longer on the Mandalorian season three, but it could be important to set things up because Boba Fett is heavily rumored to have a big part of season three of the Mandalorian. So let's let's do the whole the Fett side quest stuff, the the book of Boba Fett. I don't know if that's going to take place after season two of Mandalorian or if it's going to go back and talk about what happened after the Sarlacc pit. It'll probably be a combination of both, which is totally fine with me. Um, so I think it's now, gonna be about him taking control of what was previously the Hut criminal empire, at least on Tatooine. That, that part yeah. of it on Tatooine, yeah, because you know huts are all over the place. You know they're all over yeah. the galaxy. You have Hut space, which is a pretty, pretty nice mm -hmm. sized region of space that neither the Republic nor the Empire could really take from them. I know, I know, each had a varying degree of success, but. I mean, they yeah, you know, they had power they, still. Yeah, Mafia Mop, power is a little stronger, you know, in the Star Wars universe. And you so know, my, and, my and, only uh, concern moving forward is with no evidence to support this. Just trying to use the context clues I have available. I think Filoni is staying in this thirty-year gap between original trilogy and our prequel trilogy to this beginning of sequel trilogy. I think that's where Filoni lives. More so post original trilogy. I know Clone Wars was, you know, the Clone Wars, but that was a George Lucas and Filoni project. Rebels was mm -hmm. post, you know, Mandalorians post original trilogy. I think this is his, this thirty year gap. I think is really where he's gonna focus on. Yeah. With that being yeah, said, definitely. you see us in this next batch of shows, and I know this isn't a show about all the new announcements, but do you think that this next batch of shows is gonna touch maybe? older star wars history or do you think foreseeable future we're going to get a lot of high republic to beginning a sequel trilogy and we're just going to focus on really flesh not the skywalker saga for now mm -hmm. or do you see us 
maybe Floney verse having something every once in a while about this error, but Star Wars going elsewhere. So now we have that Tiki. What well, I can't I'm even get try his last name. I know what we have. It? Yes, I know we have his movie coming up, which we both think is the culminating, you know, movie event. Kathleen Kennedy talked about, but mm-hmm. I just I don't. There's a lot of shows, and I'm wondering if they're going to spread it out or if we're getting all this in this Floney verse for the most part. What What, yeah, what do you yeah. think? Yeah. Um, okay. So the what I would personally define as the Floney verse is going to be um, everything that's stuff. going on. Uh, yeah, all the good stuff. It's going to be the best stuff, for sure. Um, but the Filoni verse is going to be all this time period around the Mandalorian and the Ahsoka. Like, it's going to be... And it could span, like, it will probably, it'll probably be the next 10 years of, of content, you know, on the screen. And I'm okay with him having that focus because it means his quality is going to be good. And let other people do stuff on the outside, you know, because they have the uh, the uh, the acolyte, acolyte thing, which is, which is going to be taking place at the end of the High Republic. Yeah. You know, and you got some off one-off stuff like the, the Obi-Wan show, and then they got this Lando thing, and that's all cool. That's all fine. But I, I would rather, like, Floney concentrate on, like, have a concentration, and that's going to be this time period, you know, that takes place after the fall of the Empire, you know, and it's going to be kind of in between this time, between that and the, the sequel trilogy, and, you know, the New Republic era, because we know that New Republic era well, ends pretty abruptly, um, you know. <laughs> you know and, and I think it makes sense, too, so, and not to get sad, but with Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford alive, I think this is when you want to focus on this time period as much as possible. So if you mm-hmm. can or need to use them, you can, because yeah. uh, Carrie Fisher's, you know, untimely passing has and quite in all honesty just to be frank has severely limited the potential of princess leia in this 30-year gap not that uh, she's not gonna be you. prominent but it's gonna be hard yeah. to de-aging technology it's it's good it's not there yet like luke looked a little funny in mandalorian something i think they'll fix when they get a new young actor to reprise mm-hmm. that role but it, they're not there yet they're a couple years out I just, yeah. I think you want to explore this as much as possible with the actual actors because I know Lucas wrote them and Floney's a writer, but Hamill and Ford are the authorities on on Luke and Harrison. I mean, when you're an actor yeah. like that, you become the yeah. character. You know every little detail about yeah. them because I'm sure George Lucas, you know, hammered it into their brain. Because yeah, now now Mark Hamill is going to be uh, he's going to play around the Star Wars like as much as he can. I don't know if you know, how many know this, but in the Tatooine episode in season one of the Mandalorian, there was the, uh, the droid at the cantina oh. that was voiced by Mark Hamill. You know, I actually been, did know that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's actually, you know, uh, made robotic and everything, but actually that was Mark Hamill. <laughs> and so, so, you know, Mark Hamill totally is on board with like doing some of the Star Wars universe. I'm not so sure about Harrison Ford. You know Harrison Ford. Um, he's not. Um, you know he ha- he's not as. You know, I think he's just a cranky old man. I think he's just going to be yeah. bad about whatever. You know, I, and you know Harrison Ford. I, I don't know if you ever watch his like late show interviews, but he's oh, just like awesome. sarcastic. He's like just sarcastic <laughs> and like oh, you know. And when people, you know, I remember when he got asked like, "Well, why'd you come back? Uh, you know, why'd you come back? You know, and do the Force Awakens?" And he's like, "Well, the money." You know, it's like I got paid a lot of money, you know, and so it's just kind of a fun. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to, 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 to put your thumb down on Harrison Ford to see how serious he is. We know he's coming back to do another Indiana Jones movie, uh, which is cool. I think he probably likes Indiana Jones better than Han Solo. It's him. Well, I think but, the older he gets, the less roles you have because in the class it's called typecasting. Yeah. And that goes into every casting there is. And as the yeah. older you get, the typecasting you can be thrown into gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. So I think eventually it's going to be like, all right, I don't have that many gigs. I'm quite bored. That's a lot of money. Yeah, I'll I'll sit yeah. on a studio and tell you how not to do it and just be crazy. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, my biggest question for this for you, because I have my opinion, and I think yes, my answer is yes before I ask it, and I'm going to give the floor to you because I really want to hear this and your explanation to yes or no. Do you see them retconning the sequel trilogy? And regardless of your answer, 
if they are going to do it, how do you think they should do it? And how would you want them to do it? So I guess, do you think they're going to do it? Yes or no. And then if they did, how do you want it done? And then how do you think they'll do it? Hmm. We're about to make a lot of people mad really quick. So just prepare. Yeah, right. <laughs> Retconning is very problematic. Um, you know, because what it just says, is it says, well, I don't like something, so we'll just throw it out. You know, I, I, and it, I've never really seen um, it really be all that successful. Um, you know, let's take it back. Terminator Dark Fate, right? The newest Terminator movie, which I thought was pretty good. I, I like Terminator movies. But basically, they just kind of, like, they, they made it a direct sequel after Terminator 2. You know, and, and so it's kind of like, Okay, so we just gonna you know just forget about everything else, uh, you know. Of course, then you can get in talking about time travel and parallel dimensions and all that stuff, whatever, blah blah blah. But it's just kind of like I think part of that is you you uh, it you know you have this whole thing where John Connor gets saved, you know, and and then all of a sudden, boom, you kill him at the beginning of you know Dark Fate, like boom, he's dead, you know. And so now John, you know, now we got the new John Connor character that that Sarah Connor has got to say. And I think that that, that is, uh, that, that it's, 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 it does a lot of disjustice to what's been put out before when you just kind of blank, you know, I understand that, um, that it, you know, with the sequels and, you know, a lot of the tension with that, um, you know, and the fact that it's in the future, it's not like they're going to, you know, they're, they're, um, it's not like they're retconning something that's something in the middle of a timeline, uh, like the Terminator. Or they, and they see they did that with Aliens 3 also. Alien 3, they pretty much just like took out a couple characters at the very beginning of the movie that you had all the struggle at the end of, and through Aliens to like save, and then all of a sudden, boom, they're dead, like the beginning of the next one. And, and, and you can't, you have to be careful about how you do that because you just lose the, you just lose the audience whenever, if you do it wrong. Okay. Now I'm not saying that you can't, there's not ways to do it. Okay. If you retcon the sequels, you don't say, you don't come out and you say, well, we're going to retcon the sequels. You know, what you do is you come out with something awesome that might retcon it. And people go, well, wait, how could that happen? It was awesome. But how could you do that because of this? And, people, and they might just go, well, because we're going to kind of go ahead and just move that to the side, you know. We're we're going to kind of going to act like that's in a in a it's in the multiverse or something. And um, but also too, you know, whenever creativity thrives under under boundaries, okay. Just in general, you know, you're a lot more creative about things if you have constraints. Of course, you can't have too tight of constraints. But if you if you get rid of all constraints, actually creativity suffers. So you have the sequel trilogy and you have this thing here, right? And so if you what you do, if what you do is you make the sequel trilogy better by what you put out, you know, like in this time frame before it, like then that's the better way to go. If you can find a ways to not eliminate it but make it better. And I hundred percent agree with that. Hundred yeah, percent. There, and there are signs in the Mandalorian that they are what they're doing is they're kind of feeding into like making the sequel trilogy better. Now, I've actually like lost a little bit of my muster for the sequel trilogy because of the Mandalorian because it's so good. And I'm like, well, there's kind of a problem here. We're going to run into the sequel trilogy eventually. But, you know, I'm just going to have to say, hey, we got these guys that know what they're doing. I'm just going to trust them, you know, trust Filoni. Lord, like trust Peloni, you know, like <laughs> just just trust them. Uh, My only the, problem you know, with the sequels, and I and I think it's gonna be hard for them to fix. I agree with you. I think they should fix it, and I think they're. I think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to make it make sense because I think there's potential there. The only thing I have a problem with is out of your four main characters, you have Poe, Finn, Ray, Kylo. Kylo's awesome. Kylo. Kylo's awesome. I don't think you need to fix him at all. I think that's actually a really, really good character. One of my favorite Star Wars characters, if mm -hmm. arguably my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, it's between him, Ahsoka, and and Luke. Probably like every other basic white girl Star Wars fan. Yeah, but I just 
Finn and Ray. It's going to be hard because Finn yeah. just doesn't make sense because they didn't do nothing with him, which I've heard rumors because China is extremely racist and didn't want a black dude as a prominent part of Star Wars, which, by the way, I've heard more than one reference to that. So I'm pretty sure that's real because it's going to have to get political. But China is extremely racist towards black people. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that, you know, the, the prominent black guy with the most potential in the series doesn't get anything moving forward. Another conversation. Sorry for getting too real for everybody. Yeah. But I just, yeah, I, I'm not I hating on Ray. It's just they didn't. She's almost a Mary Sue. Like, there's no struggle. I have trouble relating with Ray. And I like Daisy Ridley. She's a phenomenal actress. I like a lot of her other work. She's going to be a very good star. I think out of all the actors, I think Adam Driver's great. I can see him being like Harrison Ford, you know, being a, a known actor, a B list star. Maybe an A list star, depending on who you ask. Mm -hmm. But I think Daisy Ridley being the the Carrie Fisher, not trying to cause girl to girl, but Carrie Fisher had a very prominent career outside mm -hmm. of Star Wars. So did Harrison mm -hmm. and Mark Hamill. But they more had like Mark Hamill became Joker, Harrison Ford became Indiana Jones. Carrie Fisher was a Harry Met Sally, you know, just all kinds of you know, just she was an actress. She could play all kinds of roles. I and I can see you know Daisy Ridley doing that. Mm -hmm. I just think it's going to be a struggle to make them make that character relatable. If they yeah. can do that, okay. I think they save it. I just don't know how they'll do okay. it. Uh, I, I, okay, because you're right. Ray, Ray, the problem with Ray was the struggle. Um, uh, and I tell you, I know one way they could have did it, and they could have killed Finn. Because Finn and Ray have that have that deep connection they had that deep connection together and if in the last jedi if they would have if they would they could have raised the stakes for ray by 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 killing off finn now and people were like well you know why would you do that and i like finn i like the character for mm -hmm. sure 100 but um luke had obi-wan die in front of him right yeah i mean you know you had uh you know you, you the these type of things you know death as far as storytelling, talking about like the storytelling aspect, is you got to raise the stakes for uh, for your hero, for your 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 protagonist, because the, the 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 bigger the stakes and the more they have, the more crap they have to go through, the more epic the story. All right, and if you want to talk about if you want a story and a character to be epic, you got to put them through a lot. And one big big example of this is the movie The Gladiator. I mean, Maximus went through hell, and that's why it was such an epic movie. Did he ever so, have a moment in that film? Not that I'm like, <laughs> a battle, but did he ever like, oh, man, he's just looking good for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's always setback after setback after setback, but he prevailed, you know? And so you, you have, and then, of course, he ended up dying. But, um, Spoiler you know, alert. Yeah, we're, huh? In case you haven't seen the movie in the last 30 years, 20 years, however yeah, old it is. Yeah, yeah. It's like, came out like in 2000 or something like that. But, uh, you know, but it, it's, it's you, if you want Ray to really come through, you, you have to bring up the stakes. Just like in, you know, in Empire Strikes Back, you didn't have, uh, you didn't have Luke, you know, people didn't die. But, but Han Solo, future was uncertain because, uh, you know, with the carbonite stuff. But you also have him get a, a limb chopped off and then him getting the news that the, the biggest baddie in the, in the galaxy is his dad. Or might be his father, you know. Like, so you have to put you have to put this stuff, your characters, uh, through stuff if, in the writing process. And we'll talk about the writing process. And so, so it's not Daisy. You know, Ray's it, the issues with the Ray character is not Daisy Ridley, Ridley's fault. It's the writer's problem. Mm -hmm. Again, which comes back to one of the criticisms of the sequel trilogy is that you guys weren't on the same page. You know, like you guys got to be on the same page. And so, it's a uh, um, because yeah. Ryan Johnson think, said that this he we love that he could have taken Star Wars if they if they would have followed what he did, which I'm not saying I agree with all of it. Star Wars could have been somewhere pretty interesting because I think it'd be cool to have Ray literally be no one. Like, mm -hmm. I think yeah, that would have been more profound than oh, yeah, your yeah. Daughter, granddaughter. How about you're just no one? <laughs> like, now, yeah, so I, 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 um, one of the things that I get tired of, um, somewhat or I get kind of tired of in movies or stories or whatever is that you know to, to be the hero right you have to have some sort of special connection right 
like like you have to come you have to have some sort of birthright or there's something about you that's destined you know and so, okay so that's cool you know that there's definitely a place for it you know it's kind of like you know i go like the captain america right he was a nobody yeah he had a heart of gold he, he was a nobody just a scrawny little you know uh kid you know from brooklyn right that, but, but because somebody recognized that hey, you've got something in your heart, not your lineage or where you were born or who you're related to or whatever, but there was somebody that acknowledged that you've got something inside of you that I think could handle the responsibility of this. And so that's one reason why I really, I really, really do like Captain America is because there's, um, there was no sense of destiny for him in his life, you know, right? It was, you know, you were born for this kind of stuff. Um, cause even with Tony Stark, well, his dad kind of set the bar for, and set things up, you know, for him to be who he was, which is good for that character, but you got, it's okay to have, um, nobodies and also having nobodies becoming somebody like that is like good for the audience because there's so many of us out here living our lives and we're just like, we're just kind of out here. the Mandalorian and Din Djarin. Mm -hmm. He's literally nobody. He's just the, a foundling. Literally just Not walking through the galaxy and embarked yeah. on this great journey. And it's never been about like, oh, this is your father. It's like the cool yeah. probably the thing that gives him destiny is the dark saber, which he got by accident. <laughs> it's literally the opposite yeah. of what the plan was supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. So so like if the Mandalorian started out and it was revolved around Bo Katan, it would be totally different because well, mm -hmm. she is in royal lineage and mandalore and all this stuff and it's had the dark saber and all that and so there's kind of this destiny and you're born for this kind of stuff right you know even bogotan smirked in that last episode that you know some of us are uh you know serving a higher calling you know uh, you know it, it's a uh, um you know it, it helps it, it's nice to have that that kind of man you know man is man kind of thing or that that person just making their way through the galaxy you know kind of stuff yeah, and that's good for the story. And so that's, I think, part of what kind of highlights a lot of this. And, but it's, and the character's got to go through a lot of changes, too. And the Mandalorian became a completely different person from the beginning of the show to where we are now. And that's very, very important. And I think that that's done with masterful writing. Like when you got like Fabro understands that, Filoni understands that. You know, because even going back and talking about the Ahsoka character, you know, Dave Filoni wrote Ahsoka so people would hate her at first. And people did hate her at first. But he had a plan to write her and take her through a process to where, well, then she ends up being one of the most beloved Star Wars characters. And that was not done by accident, people. That was done on purpose. That's called writing, crafting a character. And that's a big difference. That's why the Filoni verse is important for Star Wars. And that's, of course, where the sequel trilogy broke down. And, you know, and it was the future of the Floniverse, uh, which is what we're mainly talking about here, is, you know, um, is to take the time and let it play itself out. And so whatever the reasons are for The Mandalorian Season 3 to maybe be delayed a little bit, I'm okay. It's not like we're not going to have any Star Wars because you know, we're going to have Book of Boba Fett come out when we'd expect Mandalorian Season 3 to come out, what we thought we'd expect. But then soon after that, you can have Mandalorian season three, and then pretty soon we're going to have so much stuff being thrown at us that we're not going to know. And this year stuff. we have Bad Batch and um, I forgot I forgot the name of it, the Japanese anime, the ten short films. Yeah, that comes yeah, out yes. this year too, and I'm excited about that. I think that's going to be because yeah. and and for the re real quick to clear it for everybody, if it came out after Disney bought Star Wars, it's canon, unless it's Legos. They call that the Sea Universe or something like that, which is literally just fun, random stuff. It's its own make-believe thing. And video games, but the video game's canon unless they say it's not canon. So just so everyone yeah. knows, it's real simple. Look, I, I forget the year that Disney bought Star Wars, but if it's after that date and it's a book or comic, it's canon. Unless it's it says... 2000, when, what year? Yeah, I think it's around 2000. Around 2012, 2013. I, I, I thought like it was 12 or 13 ish, but but just so ever because I know yeah. there's been I've I've seen comments online like oh what's canon what's not canon is now Disney produced Star Wars. Yeah, everything that's and, not Disney is yeah. not canon, well, just including Legos. Legos is not well, canon. Yeah. Obviously. yeah. What 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 they brought in what they brought in what they considered canon when Disney bought Lucasfilm 
was anything that was on had been appeared on a screen um, up to that point. So it would have been been the movies and the animated and, and Clone Wars. Basically, that was it. Clone Wars, the animated series, and then you had six films. Oh, and the uh, question like, that our friend Trish brought up on your status is the holiday special canon or are we do they let that one in or is that no. one from the legends <laughs> it, but 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 it's part of the the star wars lore baby i mean now okay so the star wars special for those that might not know it um <laughs> was something that that they threw together and put out for in time for christmas i think in 70 i don't know it might have been 77 i don't know if it was 78 so anyway I'll, I'll look and, up. and I think it was 77, but, um, you know, they threw it together. They kind of forced the actors to kind of be involved with it. It was cheesy, corny. 1978. Okay, so it's 78. Okay, so so then, you know, you have this 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 holiday special, and it's kind of multi-things. It's actually where they introduced Boba Fett through an animated short. And um, his, uh, the cool shooty-shooty thing. The, pul- thing. The, pul- the, the pulse rifle. Yeah, a yeah, gun, not the- shooty-shooty thing thing, a gun. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pulse rifle, okay. Uh, so you know, uh, because also they because they were they were hyping up the next you know Empire start they were starting to gear up for Empire Strikes Back, and they knew Boba Fett was going to be in it. Matter of fact, the Boba Fett figure was released in the re- the Star Wars line of toys. It was the very last the twenty first figure that they released from the original Star Wars line of toys. Okay, before they started producing Empire Strikes Back toys. Nerd. All right, and so that you know, of course, they were they were doing some toy selling there. You know, and introducing Boba Fett and hyping him up. Um, you know, they hyped him up for him not to do much, kind of like they did Darth Maul. I mean, Darth wasn't Maul he originally one of the very first scripts or the first outlines? Wasn't he going to be the main villain before they really started on the process? Uh, no, I don't think he's going to be a main villain. I think he probably might have was going to have a bigger role than he okay. ended up having. I don't know. Um, I love the McQuarrie art of uh, of the early like concepts of Boba Fett. I actually had the figure; it's pretty cool. It's like all white armor. It's pretty neat. But um, so you have a um, so this holiday special like it was it aired once okay they it aired once it was never aired again and um, and George Lucas just acted like it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> but That's of course, awesome. All the bootleggers out there, you know, God bless them. The bootleggers out there, so they they have the uh, the you know the holiday special, and you can go. I think that they, you know, because it's become kind of a, a funny like Star Wars like history thing, you know, you can get on YouTube and find it and watch it. Still you in know? on Disney and Plus it, yet? It's just it. What? It's not on Disney Plus yet. No, 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 it's not. But I think it's on YouTube. But but you you uh, but it was just a. It's become just kind of a little cult fan thing. Uh, to have fun with, you know, because it's cheesy and everything and all that. And, you know, it's fun. It's just a fun thing to have. And they, they've, instead of ignoring it, people are kind of like, you know, Lucas kind of more oh, yeah, it was kind of dumb, but, you know. But, you know, fans, like, in g- generally kind of cherish it, you know, that has seen it because, you know. It's and real quick for everyone thing. out there, I have found it on YouTube and you can uh, see buying options on Amazon. I'm not going to dig to actually see if there's a seller, but you can stream it on YouTube and potentially find it on Amazon. If yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know why you do that, but yeah, I <laughs> there don't. you go. But um, I don't, there, there was a, um, um, a weird Al Yankovic uh, music video years ago. It's a uh, white nerdy is a uh, white nerdy song. And in the music video, it shows him like, like meeting somebody in a back alley and buying something in a, you know, in a, like a brown paper sack or something. And then he like pulls it out and it says Star Wars holiday special on it. And he's like, <laughs> oh, you know, like he got it. <laughs> so it's just been a, uh, one of those things. And matter of fact, they have a Star Wars, uh, the Lego one, but they have a, a you know, a, a, you know, the new Star Wars holiday special. Coming Watched out. it. It's good. It's about yeah. life day. Yeah, which is what about which is what uh, which is what happens in the original one. That's Life like Day. their Christmas, right? Life Day is their Christmas. Well, it's a well, it's it's a it's a Wookiee holiday. You know, also, Wookie for holiday. everyone out there, if you want to watch Star Wars and not worry about anything, have a good time. Disney Plus, the Lego stuff's awesome. Uh, my favorite, I watch it a lot, is Star Wars Droid Tales, and I believe they announced 
they're going to make some more of those in yeah. the investor yeah. now. So yeah. they're fun. Yeah. It follows R two D two or C three PO, and they, it, it's it's hilarious. Like uh, on one of the ones they've already did, they kind of go through the whole Star Wars story with just fun non canon you know elements. And one of it's where Qui Gon is talking to Anakin, and he tells him about being a Jedi and everything. And Anakin's like, "Can I go be a Jedi?" And to have the little blue guy behind him yell, "Red flag!" because he's selling flags. And then Qui-Gon's oh. like, "Yeah, you can be a Jedi and explore the galaxy." And he goes, "Red flag!" And he goes, "Well, I have to meet, leave my mom." He goes, "Yes." And then the little blue guy's like, right up in this camera. He goes, "Red flags!" <laughs> <laughs> Just little stuff like that. It's it's fun. It it adds humor to it. It's it's a nice take on Star Wars. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, it's good to have that little fun like that for sure. Right. Just like with the animated thing that they're gonna be coming out with. Like it's gonna, uh, you know, I don't know how it'll be a different interpretation of things, you know. The, like the, the Japanese movie, anime, Japanese, yeah, it'll be probably reminiscent of the Animatrix that they released for, you know, like, you know, in between, like before they put out Matrix Reloaded, which is pretty good. And and, it, and the Animatrix filled in on some of the machine history, but I wonder what they're gonna story. cover in those anime short films. Ooh, it'd be know, a cool way to introduce. Revan, maybe, maybe drop a little Revan bomb right there in a little anime short, you know, just enough Revan. to not make anyone happy, but just to piss people off more. Like, yeah, right. oh, where's Revan? You know, that's what I would do. Yeah. You know, I, what I what I what I now fear about Revan is people are gonna like want Revan so much, and people are gonna overhype Revan, and so when they finally do it, people are gonna get all but hurt about it because you know they're gonna end up being disappointed because they messed it up for themselves by overhyping and, it and having and then 15 years after want him back so bad and then just make the actor feel like he belongs finally yeah right and hating christians let, let, let's make somebody you know like seclude themselves from society because we have a problem with over expectation it's so yeah. bad because daisy ridley and uh the gentleman who played finn i can't pronounce his name so i'm not gonna try it but they even came out like yeah i'm done with star yeah. wars like yeah. i don't want to do star wars anymore but then you have the crazy marine adam driver like oh i'd love to do star wars like i love getting yelled at and told i suck i'm from the military <laughs> adam driver i yeah it's He's, uh, I love it because he has a perspective on life that most people in Hollywood don't. And, and, I, and I definitely appreciate that. Quick for everything on that, if anyone wants to really watch a good TED Talk, um, Google Adam Driver's TED Talk. He kind of talks about him becoming an actor and him joining uh, the Marines after 9-11. And he really grabs some tissues. But And besides that, it's, it's a really profound story. I know I use that word a lot, but it really is. And I mean, He's a really good, good guy, a good actor. He's, he's really good. The cele- he's the type of celebrity you should support, kind of like Harrison Ford. It's o- they're almost mad that they're famous. Yeah, you know uh, when uh, Gervais was uh, the host of like the Emmys or something, uh, mm-hmm. like a couple years ago. Year. He, yeah, last year, and he was just completely like railing on all the all the stars and, and all their and the person that was the person that didn't have a shock look on their face was, was Adam that? Driver. He was laughing. Because I'm like, because he's got a military sense of humor. Like the dirtier and the darker, the more funny. Have you and seen the meme of it with Ricky saying a joke and then Adam cracking up and then everyone around Adam just like stone faced and Adam's like yes. looking around laughing. And, and, and he's smart. And yeah, 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 yeah. It just, it just, I love that. It, it, if if you haven't seen the Ricky Gervais like thing, you got to go get the like YouTube the cut of him just making fun of everybody and all the pedophiles. It's great. How and great then, would it be if you get Star Wars? If what? If Ricky Gervais could be in Star Wars. Just give him a cameo, like they give a lot of people cameos. Why not, right? Let's just to end this to end this podcast. What? I'll go first, and you go. It can be unlikely. It doesn't have to be what you think will happen. But what's the one actor you'd like to see in a Star Wars film? Mine would be. Uh, I don't. It, it's. I'm going to cheat here. I want The Rock and Kevin Hart. To do something together because I love that dynamic. I love mm-hmm. everything about those two working together. I think it'd be fun to have some kind of, I don't know, Kevin Hart and Rock type movie just together in the Star Wars universe. I, I think Kevin Hart and like little miniature like Stormtrooper outfit. I don't know. The possibilities no, no, no. are in. They, 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 need to be, they need to be bounty hunters that work together. Oh, yeah. and just, where, where like everything goes wrong, but they somehow pull it off at the end. And it's just a, a funny little like. Yeah, it could be it could be fun. 
for sure. Um, actors that have uh, need to be in a part of Star Wars. Uh, man, of course, you know I. I know this is probably like overstated too much. I, I think he's too getting too old to be Revan now, but I think it'd be cool to see Keanu Reeves do something in the Star Wars universe just because it's Keanu Reeves. You know, screw I mean, Revan, just have him be John Wick. Just, John yeah, Wick yeah. four, he hops to a teleporter, boom, on a star yeah, destroyer. Just, just have him show up. <laughs> of course, uh, you know, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of fun. Um, a lot of fun things, yeah, you can do. And I, I like that they do these cameo things. Um, it's it's kind of fun. You know, like, uh, I don't know if people know that Daniel Craig was in The Force Awakens. Just say that. <laughs> he was he was a storm. He was a stormtrooper. In he was the one who got mind tricked by Ray. Yeah, that that left the gun and opened the door when Ray got out. Because you, and you go back and listen to it, like that's Dan- yeah, that's Daniel Craig. And the way he walks, you're like, that's Daniel Craig's walk. You know, Jeez. and uh, and and in and in the credits, in the credits. His his stormtrooper designation is JB 007. You know that Keanu Reeves thing that's John Wick and Star Wars is making my mind run. He could have like a Han Solo Chewbacca relationship with the Wookiee, and then his Wookiee dies, and then he just goes hell bent on who killed his. I don't know. <laughs> they should do it. <laughs> just let let it not be necessarily canon, but just kind of a fun film, you know. Be like, hey, we what if? Right. Have it be what if a Star Wars what if? I wish they'd do something like that. Like, hey, we're gonna make a Star Wars movie. By the way, for all you nerds, this has absolutely nothing to do with anything. This is just for fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, that'd be amazing. But yeah, everyone down there, sure. give us in your comments. Tell us uh, an actor yeah. or actors that you'd like to see in a Star Wars film. Serious, not serious. Also, share with us where you think we're heading with Mandalorian season three and the whole Filoni verse. And uh, you know, wh- where would you? Where do you want them to go? And how do you want them to handle the sequel trilogy? You know, let's hear your opinions down there. And uh, other than that, it was a blast. Any last words, Trevor? No, man. Just uh, continue to have fun. It's uh, be patient. You know, uh, be patient. Let things roll out how they need to roll out. And uh, you know, don't be toxic. <laughs> <laughs> and ha- you know, have fun. It's Star Wars. You love it. Um, again, I think the pl- the, the idea of uh, the Filoni verse is going to be kind of the central thing. For the years to come, it's going to be the unifying factor. It's going to be the you know the big event stuff, and so um, just have fun with it, man. You know, don't worry about the controversy. And I think I like the idea that the Mandalorian season three might make a time jump because that could bring up a good opportunity to bring uh, Grogu back in in a different place. Because you know, again, Grogu, that character for him to show back up has to be different. He's got to be able to contribute something different to the story instead of just being a little the cute trope in the satchel. So, um, you know, a time jump for the Mandalorian season three could be good. It could uh, bring a way for Grogu to come back into the picture and actually just be like a Jedi or something, you know. Maybe he'll grow a couple inches. Who knows, you know, but that where where it could be um, be a different thing. They could do and, a cool uh, time jump thing where the Boba Fett series takes place in that time jump. You know, where that could series be. takes a few years and Mando yeah. comes in at the end or something. Yeah. You know, because, you know, the reality is, is that they're going to do a whole retaking of Mandalore thing. There's going to be probably a lot of things they're going to have to do in the background. You can't have an episode for them to, you know, steal every piece of uh, weaponry and ship they need to do it, you know. So just let them do it in the background, meet back up with them whenever we get to the point where it's time for, uh, for it to happen, you know, for whatever is going to end up happening in Mandalore. And it should be, it should be awesome. So, but yeah, have fun. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this. Um, and um, if you like my sweatshirt, thank for it. I'll leave a link for that in the description. And, also and there'll also be too. a link for oh for that as well. And there'll also be a link for Trevor Star Wars Banter Group on Facebook. All right, all right. Community, all right. everyone dive in there, have a good time. Yeah. Now, now here's this too. Okay, all right. This says calf. Now tell me, what does that mean in Star Wars? Put that in the comments below. First person to get it right in the comments wins absolutely nothing because we have like four subscribers right now. But <laughs> maybe next time. But we'll see you guys later. Uh, may the force be with you. Get your nerd on. And remember, don't be a toxic fan. Stay a kid.